In this video, I want to show you an overview of the new SciPy optimizer available in the Solution 2 under web app. So let's go ahead and, and discuss how this all works. Basically, the way we make the SciPy optimizer available to MSC Nastran is by using another package called OpenMDAO. Basically, the web app is responsible for the inputs and the outputs. The web app is also responsible for passing these off to OpenMDAO. OpenMDAO itself has the SciPy optimizer built in. So that's how we're doing all of this. Now let me go ahead and discuss how the input and the output work here. So for the input, we're going to have one BDF file. Basically OpenMDAO is going to be supplying an input. So here for example, you could have a PROD uh, entry here we are using the symbolic substitution capability so here we have an x1 in the actual field uh, after the substitution you can see we've substituted a value of five so again open mdao is going to be responsible for giving us these new variable values and then we substitute them into the bdf file now as for the output we're going to use the H5 file. Uh, the output or the responses can be anything. They can be the weight, the stress, the displacements, the strains, and so on and so on. Uh, you can set some of these as the objective or the constraints. So once we extract those responses, we then pass them on to MDAO, and then MDAO passes them on to the SciPy optimizer. So you can see this uh, relationship between all three. Now for today's demonstration, I am going to cover the three bar truss example. Basically we have the variable set as the cross section or areas for elements one, two, and three. Uh, we wanna minimize the weight. And then we also have constraints on the stresses or the axial stresses and the displacements at node four. This example can be found in the MSC Nastran sensitivity and optimization user's guide this is chapter eight of the three bar trust example so now let's go ahead and jump to the web app and start with the process so before starting we're going to need the bdf file so if you go to the user's guide and look in the size optimization section um, just click the starting link or the starting BDF files link, um, you can click save as or save link as to save a local copy. Now we have to do with something special to this file. Um, let me actually make a folder for this. Maybe I'll call it one starting files. What I'm going to include in this file is the request for the HDFI file type. So here I'm going to use MDL PRM1. And then I'm going to run Nastran. So this statement, if you will, MDL PRM HDF51, this triggers the creation of the H5 file. Uh, so here you can see that it's been created. Let's make sure there are no FATO messages inside of the F06 file. Okay, things look good. Uh, one other thing I wanna output, uh, let me see if it's in here. I wanna output the weight. So for that, I'll include this entry. Let's go ahead and run this again. And the reason I wanna output the weight, um, I'm going to use the SciPy optimizer to perform an objective with the given problem statement I just showed a moment ago. So let's go ahead and again, make sure there are no fatal messages. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that we do have the weight in here. So here we have the weight matrix or the mass matrix. And here our weight of 4.82. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started with the process and how to configure this with the SciPy optimizer with uh, OpenMDAO. So here, if you open the home page, there is a icon here on the far right called Parameter Study. Uh, you would go ahead and click that. Um, before starting, uh, go to the download and make sure that this yellow box sort of disappears. Um, you don't want that yellow box to stay there. 
Now let's go ahead and start the process. Let's go ahead and import this PDF file we just uh, downloaded and, and modified. Let's go ahead and select the three cross-sectional areas, uh, 1.0, 2.0, and 1. Uh, this will be our, how do I say, our three variables. Let's go ahead and look at the problem statement. So we want the variables to vary between 0.1 and 100. So let's go ahead and add that here, 0.1 and 100. 0.1 and 100. And now let's go ahead and go to the setting section. So this is where you're, you can change it. Do you want to perform a local optimization or a sensitivity study? So here I want to perform a local optimization. Let's go to the responses now. Here, go ahead and select your H5 file type. Now, if you get a, a problem with the file size, which does happen, you will have to download a special desktop application. So if you go to the connection section, this walks you through the process of downloading and setting up this desktop application. Uh, and that's only if you get an error with the file size. Uh, so the error would show up here, but in this case it doesn't, so we can carry on. So let's go ahead and upload the file. And now we have to select every response for a problem statement. So the first response we want to select, we want to select the weight. So here under the MX columns, go ahead and select the weight. And here you can see that the weight has been selected. Let's go ahead and do the same for the axial stresses. So here we want to select each response. And then let's go ahead and look at the node or the displacement for node 4. So go ahead and disable auto execute. I'll type in node 4 and then I'll select the displacement data set and then I'll click acquire. And we want to monitor the response or the displacement at node 4 for the X and Y components. Now there are four values we selected. Um, the first few values correspond to subcase 1. So here you can see the subcase 1. The second row and the second values correspond to subcase 2. So this is a good time to describe uh, what are these columns that are located after the domain ID column. Basically, these columns describe the current state of the response, or so the moment in time. Um, if you were performing a nonlinear analysis, you could have responses at each individual time step. You could have responses from different subcases. Um, you can have responses from different analysis types. Maybe you're performing a normal modes analysis and then separately you're performing a nonlinear analysis. These columns after the domain ID column describe the state of the response. So think of it as the moment of time in time and you can imagine there are a lot of moments in time. So that's what that's why you would have all of these responses that correspond to these different states or moments in time. Uh, and here we selected various responses for both subcases. So now here on the right, we've selected the weight as a response. We've selected the stress, the axial stresses, and the displacements. Now, we are going to trigger um, the objective as follows. We're going to set the first weight response and we're going to set that to be minimized. The bounds for the axial stresses, that's going to be the same as, how do I say, the problem statement. So those stresses will be between negative 15,000 and positive 20,000. So let's go ahead and copy that over here. And then the lower bound for the displacement, that would be negative 0.2, and then positive 0.2 for the upper bound, and we'll go ahead and do the same here. And then I think that's it here. Let's go ahead and go to our download section and download this new package. And we'll go ahead and extract. And now we'll start the process. Now, there are a few differences I want to point out. 
Uh, let's see if we can go here and start describing some of the differences. So the first difference I want to describe is here when you're using the SciPy optimizer, we're not using any of the traditional Solution 200 entries. Uh, here I'm in the size web app, um, but here you can notice that we are not using the DESVAR entries. We're not using DVPRO1s. We're not using DRESP1, the deconstraint entry that you see here on the right side. Um, we're using a completely different method of using the optimization capability with the SciPy optimizer. Uh, if you can see here, when we open the original BDF output, you can see that the PROD entries have now been updated with these symbolic variables, if you will, or symbolic inputs. Uh, what, what the whole web app is doing now, it's created the special model zero BDF file. You can see here that it's it's defined what the var variable values are. So the, the optimizer, if you will, is going to change this 0.84, it's 0.13, it's going to change that during the optimization then it's going to look at ins inside of the model BDF file. It's going to take this 0 0.08 as an example, and it's going to substitute it here. So you can imagine this is going to happen a lot. And here you can see that the optimizer has already varied this file. So I'll click reload here. And now instead of 0.15 or 0.12 or 0.1, I forgot what the value was, it's now changed the X2 variable to 0 0.303. And this process is going to happen again and again. So here, if you can uh, notice that, and here I've accidentally closed it, uh, you can see the variable values are being changed. So that's the first difference I wanted to highlight. Um, the inputs are very different from a solution 200 example. The other thing I wanna highlight, um, Let's see if here we can define how many function evaluations. So the number of Nastron runs is very different now. Uh, the sensitivity calculations are performing are being performed in a manual method. Um, and by this, I mean the following. So suppose you are at the, you're performing design cycle one and you need to calculate the sensitivities. This is how you perform the sensitivity calculation. Let's suppose you have delta uh, R0, which is the weight, and then we have delta X1. So you want to perform the first sensitivity for the first response. Uh, this is how you would do it as follows. Um, you would take the existing X1 value, but then add a small step, if you will. Um, we'll call it time step, or no, no. Um, step, I don't know, X. No, just call it step, I guess. Now, this could be something small. So if the original value was maybe 2.0, then the time step would be something small, maybe 0 0.001. Uh, this time step can be controlled. So if you go to the settings section, click add settings. Um, here, if you look at the step setting, this is where you can modify uh, this, this behavior. So you would run this 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 analysis, this Nastron run, and then you would get your sensitivity, but that's only for for X1. If you want to get the sensitivity for X2, then you would have to do a completely new run. So here for one design cycle, and this might be one, for one design cycle, I am having to perform a run for each variable just to calculate the sensitivities. So here you can imagine that for each design cycle, I'm actually performing three Nastran runs. And this is very different from the Solution 200 method. With Solution 200, you're only having to perform one Nastran run per design cycle. Whereas with the SciPy optimizer, you have to run Nastran one time per variable. So here with SciPy, let me just sum it up. With SciPy, you have to run three MSC Nastron runs 
or one MC Nastron run per variable. But with solution 200, you only have to run. So here I should really say per three runs per design cycle. And here it's just one run per design cycle. Now the reason this is happening is because uh, Solution 200 employs something called the approximate model. So uh, of course refer to the user's guide. The design sensitivity and optimization user's guide for MSC Nastran. They discuss what the whole process is with the approximate. Uh, this should be the approximate model. Um, and then after you read that you'll better understand why uh, with solution 200, this problem only requires one Nastran run per design cycle, but with SciPy, it will require three runs per design cycle. Now, the second, let's see, what else do I want to cover? I, I think for now that would be enough. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the results of this optimization. So here you can see that um, we have had eight design cycles. If you look at the, the data here, see which file would it be I think it's the STD out here you can see all of the input and the output so here you can see that there are some Nastran messages of how Nastran was executed you can see some of the preparation how uh, the inputs are being modified so here we're we're starting off with the value of one two and one for the variables um, and that's what we're using for the substitution. But later on, you can see things like this. Um, okay, this is what Open OpenMDAO wants to use. Uh, but since the MC Nastran field has the limit of 16 characters, we have to perform a rounding off. So this is what's actually used for the variable. Um, it runs Nastran, and then it extracts the responses. So you can see that's happening here. Um, and then here, you can see the actual derivatives so here i think that would be available here somewhere right so these would be your derivatives and then if you want to search and count how many times um, nastran was run you would search for start msc nastran and here you can see it's been executed 30 times so here um, since it's been eight design cycles and there are three variables that's what about let's see 24 runs and then for the initial, that's an extra eight runs. So you're looking at maybe around, well, roughly speaking, there are about 30 runs is, is what I'm trying to point out. Um, okay, then. So it's roughly three times, uh, if you will. Now let's go ahead and look at the results. Um, I believe we should get a value of 2.7. Here you can see that um, that's exactly what we got. If we go back and we look at the solution files, when we use solution 200, so here you can see that I'm, I've am i already used or I've done the same example with solution 200. Let's go ahead and look at the results. And you'll see here that we've essentially had the same result. So here on the left is going to be the the parameter study or the optimization with SciPy and here on the right is going to be the optimization with the solution 200 uh, capability so again with SciPy we needed to run Nastran 30 times but with solution 200 we only really needed to run Nastran maybe seven or eight times and that's very important because if you have a model that takes 30 minutes to run and you have 10 variables, that is going to be a very time consuming optimization. So what can you do to reduce the time? Uh, number one, you could reduce how long it takes to perform one Nastran run. So you can maybe reduce the, the size of the mesh and just use uh, fewer elements. Uh, the second thing you could do, reduce the number of variables you have um, just so it takes uh, less time to compute the sensitivities. Now, 
I want to leave you off with how to perform sensitivity analysis. So let's go ahead and close some of these windows. And if we go back to the original uh, parameter study window where we set up this optimization, you can go to the settings section and perform a sensitivity analysis. So let's go ahead and just click sensitivity. Um, here, if you want to modify the step size, you can do that as follows. Um, just go ahead and make this maybe, maybe we want a smaller step size. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll change the sensitivity analysis. Oh, I guess here it's not honoring the change. That's okay, let's just go ahead and uh, perform the sensitivity analysis. And for this one, maybe I'll call it a sensitivity. And before I do that, maybe I want to manually change the step size. So here, this would be the one, two, three, four, and five for the second to last. So the last value would be the scalar. And then the second to last would be the step size. So maybe this is where you want to modify. Maybe you want to modify the step size. So maybe change it to something smaller. Let's go ahead and run this. And I have also already performed the sensitivity analysis. So we can do a comparison between the two. So when you're using parameter study, I recommend running a sensitivity analysis and compare those to sensitivities that you already have. Um, this is to make sure that um, when you use SciPy op uh, Optimizer that you are using somewhat accurate sensitivities. The last thing you want to do is use inaccurate sensitivities. So here, since we have three variables, parameter study or the SciPy Optimizer, um, in that case, you're having to run Nastran four times, one for the original initial values, one run for x1, one run for x2, and one run for x3. That's how you're calculating and uh, getting the sensitivities. So here you can see that for the most part, some of these values are almost the same, slightly different. Um, the behavior is almost, or first let's look at the weight. So here, if we look at the weight, um, we see we have a value of 2. And here we're getting a value of 2.82. Uh, I suspect the difference in the values because um, this is because the variable has been slightly changed. So I think here, let's see if we can find where this input is. So let's go ahead and look at uh, how the sensitivity was computed. Uh, if we look on our downloads and go back to that folder, let's go ahead and look at the std out file. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening. So the initial values for the, the cross section or arrows were one, two, and one. It's extracted the original weight, if you will. Let's scroll down a little bit. And then at some point right here, it to perform the sensitivity analysis, it slightly changes the first variable. So here before we have 1.0, but now we have this express or this value 1.0000001. But the other ones are are held constant, so we still have two and one. It performs that optimization, optimization, and it extracts the responses, and then after that, it's able to compute the first sensitivity for x1, and then it does this for the second variable. So here, uh, the variable before used to be 2. It adds a very small value of 0 .0000 dot 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 to 1. It performs that analysis. It calculates the sensitivities, and it does this again and again. Uh, so here, if we go back, that that is why you can see that uh, sensitivity is rather 
let me make sure I'm doing this right oh yeah I'm looking at just all of these and here let me let me sort this properly all right so that's why you can see some of these uh you here when you look at the first plot you can see you have some of the same values but honestly look at this a little bit more carefully uh, here is an example 2.82 uh, this is worth investigating so here the the way I've defined the solution to 100 model it's a little different so that's why here I'm getting a slightly different uh, sensitivity if you will uh, let's see what's one other thing I want to highlight let me look at this and let me go back to the PowerPoint I, I think that is enough for now um maybe one last thing that is worth mentioning uh you might be interested in performing a sort of combined optimization so here let me go ahead and show you what i mean by this i'm just close some of these windows so you might be interested in combining solution 200 with the scipy optimizer uh, this is really not possible um that's like taking one optimizer and then combining it with another optimizer um that's really not something you can do but you can do the following um here let me go ahead and modify my solution 200 file oh maybe here we don't even need the weight output mdl prm hdf51 what i'm going to head and do is I'm going to use the parameter study tool to configure local, oh, local, local optimizations. So let's go ahead and uh, look at what I mean by this. And while that's happening, uh, let's go ahead and come back to the parameter study table. Uh, let's make sure there is no yellow box in the download section. So here, um, let's go ahead and start the process. Let me go ahead and take the new H5 file. So right here, uh, before going, let me go ahead and make sure there's there are no fatal messages here. Okay, perfect, there, there is a fatal here, but it's just a comment, it's not an actual fatal message. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to the parameter study uh, window. Let me go to the responses section and select the H5 file type. Let me go ahead and upload the H5 file. Okay, great. Um, does this look great? Da, 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 da. I don't think this is right. No, this is not right. I want to select the new file here, model H5. The H5 or the data inside of this H5 file, it's going to be different because now it has data regarding the optimization. Uh, we'll get back to this in a moment, but I just wanted to make sure that this was inside of the file. Let's go ahead and do the same process we did before, but this time we're going to take and import the solution 200 files. So here um, we can select the PROD fields for the actual uh, or rather rather for the errors, but here we have access to the desbar entry. So let's go ahead and select the e initial field. So X1, 2, and 3. And then we'll go for the sample. So here we're going to maybe use a land cube to Gucci method. So here we are creating multiple MSC Nastron runs at different values for the variables. So here we maybe want to do the first run at the original values of x1, 2, and 1. And then for the next run, we want maybe 0 0.0, 1, 45, 72, and 73. Um, so we are essentially starting multiple optimizations with solution 200 at different starting points for the variables. Um, here, if you try to then switch this to local optimization, I do not recommend doing that again. If you do this, you would then use Solution 200 combined with the SciPy optimizer. This is not something that I think will work well. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, here again, what we're doing is we're creating multiple NAS trend runs. At this point, we are not 
using the optimizer. Again, if you use parameter study here as a procedure, you are not using the SIPA optimizer. You're just running Nastran multiple times. Now for the responses, maybe I want to track um, the final objective. So I'll go ahead and uh, track 4.82, which is the weight. Maybe I'll want to minimize this. And then here, let's go ahead and make sure, yes, I want to track the final response. So basically the way this is set right now, if we select it as no or blank, this this value corresponds to the objective of the initial design. So here, if we scroll to the very right, you can see the design cycle is zero. So here, if we look at the the objective history, it will be looking at this response. But we want the response at the very end. So for that, what we would do is we would switch this value from blank or no to yes. And then we'll do the same for the max constraint um, here. Let's go ahead and set that to yes. And then maybe the upper bound or the lower bound rather might be 0 0.005. And 0 0.005 is the default uh, G max value. So let's go ahead and look at that. Well, I won't go into too many details, but that this value, the max in value, this is uh, the normalized constraint value for each design cycle. So. Here at the very beginning, we had negative 0.32, and I think that's the value here. We have negative 0.32. Then at the very end, it's 0 0.0016, and here's the value of 0 0.0016. Here we want to say that the lower bound should be greater, or this value should always be greater than zero. But since we we have this different tolerance, we say that the max normalized constraint should be greater than 0 0.005. So that's what I'm supplying here. Um, let's go ahead and click download. Um, we get a reminder here. Um, we have to make one more modification and I'll go ahead and do that when we're at the download stage. Let me go ahead and call this uh, parameter study. And then if you read the message carefully, let's see. It's saying that we should never use new for the status here. For the CSV, we should use unknown. So let's go ahead and make that modification. And here, this is what you see. You see a new model one, a model two, so on and so on. Remember that we're using the special symbolic substitution method. So instead of just the value we have inserted, uh, these special variables, if you will, x1 and 2 and 3, then we run each model i individually. So here for this run, it's going to use 0 0.01, 45, and 72. It's going to take these three values and substitute them into the variable. And the process is going to be repeated again and again. So here you can see that we have, in effect, 12 runs to perform. So let's go ahead and run that process now. So I bring this up because you might want to perform a solution 200 optimization and combine that with nonlinear optimization. Um, combining the solution 200 optimizer and the SciPy optimizer is not possible. What you would have to do is configure multiple individual Nastran runs uh, if you want to do a combination of the two. But if you just want to perform a nonlinear optimization and th only that, use the SciPy optimizer. You can come here and select local optimization and perform your optimization. Uh, so here, um, I guess I'll just wait until this finishes and then uh, I'll continue the discussion. So one thing I want to point out um, here, since we configured a solution 200 model to be executed at different runs, this is performing a local optimization multiple times. And then at the very end, we compare all of the objective values together and whatever sample, whatever run produced the smallest objective value is going to be our global minimum. So here, I'll skip this step. So here, this is what we can see. 
or maybe it might be worth uh, increasing the tolerance let's go ahead and show that so here we can see that maybe sample two if you will that would have provided us with the mono so we could go ahead and look at that further but um i think you get what the idea is if you want more information on how to interpret these results you could refer to the global optimization tutorial in the user's guide um let's see let me go back to the powerpoint so let me end it off here um this was a quick overview of open mdao's scipy optimizer and the solution to under web app uh, if you have any questions or comments, you are always welcome to reach out. My contact information is here at the bottom. And thank you so much for watching.